Welcome back to In Focus. I'm your host, Yusini Tavares. Mayor Mike Przicki, along with Ashley Christopher and Earl Cooper of the Mayor's Office, are bringing back HBCU Week from September 16th through September 22nd. Ashley and Earl actually joins us now to share all the details of this year's HBCU Week. Welcome to the show. Thank you Thank for you having, having us. <laughs> yes. Thank, you. Thank you for coming. Now, let's before we get to the school week, the HBCU Week, I wanted to let everybody know a little bit about your experiences because I know actually all three of us have attended HBCUs. Mm -hmm. So let's start with that. Can we discuss a little bit about why you chose that as your career path? Sure. Um, so I am a double HBCU grad. I went to Howard University for undergrad and the University of D.C. for law school. Um, I chose an HBCU because I thought it was important, along with direction from my parents, to go to a university where I could see people that looked like me overwhelmingly, not just randomly or sporadically, but I would look around and see a lot of people that you know, looked like me that were aspiring to success and greatness. Um, so that was why. And also, I went to visit um, during Howard Homecoming, so that was another pull for me that was a draw. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And Earl, what HBCU did you attend? Uh, I went to Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. And, you know, for me, never n grew up knowing about HBCUs. It was literally something that I just kind of found on the Internet. Um, I, was, I started at Wilmington University, so I transferred to Morehouse. Okay. And um, when I learned about it, it was just, it caught my interest. I was excited. Similar to Ashley, I had a chance to go down there and um, visit during homecoming. And that was uh, that was a big a big sale to me, and um, had a great career down there on the golf course as well, and uh, one of the really best decisions that I made in my life. And what yeah. are some of the benefits? So for the young minorities who are actually watching and are thinking about are there adults who want to take their kids to a HBCU, what are some of the benefits the two of you were able to gain from attending those universities? So for me, um, an HBCU is like a family experience. Um, I've had the opportunity where, you know, if I was late or missed a class, like my professor would call me, like, hey, where are you, why aren't you here? Um, same with the student body there, everyone's looking out for each other. It's, it's really a chance to get around people um, that will push you to do better consistently. Um, so, and, and even when you graduate, you still maintain those friendships and relationships forever. So I would encourage everybody to consider for those reasons, for sure. And that's big mm -hmm. because even when I attended Morgan State University, I remember a professor of mine um, had a connection with ESPN and I had no clue, but I signed like this little sheet because I wanted right. to work during the winter and I ended up finding out that it was ESPN I was working for, but it was through that connection with the professor. Yeah. So it just speaks wow. back to the home environment. And then mm -hmm. I ended up working with Black Enterprise, but Earl Graves was an alumni right. from yeah. Morgan State University. Right. So mm -hmm. I really, really key into that family oriented type of environment for sure and for you Earl um you know family was definitely a big component but I think also for me going to Morehouse it was just being a part of such a positive legacy you know okay. and when you go there and you're walking down the halls of you know so many people I mean obviously our biggest alumni Martin Luther King so he obviously went there and they're constantly telling you the things that he has achieved before while he was a student and kind of the things that he learned his foundation here but the list goes on beyond that. I mean, you got Spike Lee, you got Samuel L. Jackson, um, Jed Johnson, who was the head of Homeland Security during the Obama administration, and so many others. And it was just like, wow, I'm I'm a part of that now. I'm a part of that cloth. And you really felt like you had a responsibility uh, to right. to uphold and, and to maintain. And I think that that is something that I carry with me every day. And that's a very powerful experience to be able to walk the ground mm -hmm. yeah. that these individuals walked. I mean, yes. there's no experience like that yeah. in this yeah. <laughs> yeah, rich history. So now the two of you have partnered together to bring HBCU Week to Wilmington. Mm -hmm. You have so many events happening within this week. So let's talk a little bit about uh, why you decided to have an HBCU Week, how mm -hmm. this started last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's just very important to expose our high school aged population to um, higher ed opportunities such as HBCUs because you know you hear constantly about University of Delaware because that's like the home school um, and there's all obviously good opportunities there um, mm -hmm. but we want to expose people to different options and opportunities and Certainly. you know let them know um, what we've experienced and what other people have experienced and that this opportunity is open to them. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah no I, I agree I echo uh, those same sentiments and um, I think that it's just been amazing to see the support that we've gotten, you know, and starting from the top down. You know, our mayor has been extremely supportive and allowed us to kind of just 
go and, 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 and grow this thing. And so, you know, we definitely appreciate him so much for that opportunity. But the community as well has shown that this is something that they want. You know, right. you know, Assie can can attest that, you know, she kind of she came with the idea and said, hey, there's something that we want to do. And it just kind of just just snowballed it. I use the word organic. It really grew organically. And I think we're seeing it every day, the excitement level and the lives that are being affected by it. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And before we go into the events, we actually have a video that highlights how Kimura is also partnered with the city. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. now there's $400,000 yes. available for scholarships. Yes. This yes. is an amazing opportunity. But before we dig into the details, I want the viewers to also see how it's impacting one of our students here. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Thank okay. Dear Ayana, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and our President, Dr. Harry L. Williams, it is a pleasure of the Office of Admissions to Delaware State University to extend an offer of admissions to you for the fall of 2018 semester. I'm really about to go to college soon, like, this is reality, this is real life. Two of my staffers brought this idea to me about creating a big event for students from around this area to come to an event where they're going to learn everything they can about HBCUs. HBCUs graduate some of the best and the brightest, and we need to make sure that we expose our high school population to higher education opportunities such as HBCUs. Members of our team talked to Camours, and they were drawn immediately to this whole idea of supporting uh, our kids going to HBCUs. By investing in students through the Future of Chemistry Scholarship, we committed to three years, $400,000, to set up scholarships for students who have an interest in STEM education. We have that opportunity to impact not only the lives of the students who receive the scholarship, but students throughout the community who aspire because of that. We're really proud of uh, Camores for setting an example to all of our other corporate citizens to try to match this kind of support. Out of 700 kids that went to the HBCU fair, I was the only one to be offered this scholarship from Camorras. I'm just grateful that this scholarship is going to take a burden off my mother because she don't have all the money in the world to send me off to college. She didn't get the chance to go to college because she ended up having me at an early age, so I'm like, okay, this is my time to make my mom proud. In some of our neighborhoods, there's a sense of, of isolation from the community at large. People see buildings going up and they see people going to really great restaurants and they see all this economic activity and they don't feel a part of it. When we get people like our folks from Comores to come up and help us, everybody feels like we're not in this alone. Wilmington is Comores' hometown. We made a commitment to this city when we chose to stay here three years ago, and we look forward to the opportunity to grow and develop with the city. We believe that science is for everyone, and we believe in STEM for all. Students like Ayana really represent the potential for discovery and the potential to unlock the next innovation that really changes the world that we live in. And when you think about it, these students are really what the future of chemistry is all about. Well, that's amazing. <laughs> Every time I see that video, I'm like, don't cry, don't yeah, cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's so crazy. hard. It's yeah. so hard, yeah. It's amazing yeah, it is. That, that you birthed this opportunity. Yeah, you is. really did. You brought this attention to the mayor, and now it's it's come to light, and now these students who are aspiring to go to an HBCU have the opportunity, especially as we saw you know, her mother being as a single mom and mm -hmm. raising her, and mm -hmm. for some of these kids, it's gonna be the first time ever in their entire family to attend a university. Yeah. So how did the, how did this partnership come about with with the opportunity to get the $400,000? Um, yeah, so, you know, it came about, one, after the college fair, you know, we kind of sat down and recap, you know, with our committee and Ashley and Tiffany and a few other people and we're saying how can we do more you know 
the college fair was a success, but we need we need to do more. It's one thing to get admitted into college, but we want to help kids get scholarships. And so we had an opportunity to talk to the executive team over at Comoros and kind of pitch the idea to them, and they were looking to do some things, and it was just kind of a perfect win-win, perfect storm kind of thing, and they jumped immediately jumped on it, as you can see, and got very supportive. And I, I must say, you know, we went to them, and they said, no, we want to do more. Like, you know, we just don't want this to be a one-off. We truly want to be committed to the changing the lives of these kids and giving them an opportunity. And the support that they have offered has just been tremendous from the top down, um, from Mark McDonald to Mark Newman to Alvinia Scarborough. Um, it's just been unbelievable so that's really kind of how it came about I can only think about how much not only is the funding going to help but it's going to empower this individual oh. mm -hmm. we don't know where she's going to go now oh, once yeah. she attends yeah. HBCU yeah. in regards to just her career path and mm -hmm. advancing in that manner yeah and she's in Delaware State right now taking 16 credits this semester has moved in everything's taken care of all her books and all the rest of that good stuff so we still you know again it's not a transaction for us i think you know we really want to make sure that we see ayana get across that finish line and graduate and making sure that we visit her and she'll be coming up for during hbcu week as well to kind of share her story mm -hmm. and that speaks to your commitment into making sure you not only impact these lives of the young people here in in wilmington but also making sure that you see them through like you yeah. said and that's important you're not yeah. just letting them go after that first 40k right. and there's room for more recipients correct mm -hmm. yeah so uh we have nine more recipients three will be chosen every year uh, starting this year at our college fair we'll have the applications available mm -hmm. uh, we have a committee composed of a uh, camores and city of wilmington people to select the individuals okay. so we have nine more forty thousand dollar scholarships that will be dispersed that's wonderful. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah, no, we yeah. can go on and on. And <laughs> yeah, talk about the exactly. Now I can imagine. But, but I do want to make sure we also get to the uh, HBCU <laughs> week as yeah. well. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. first of all, like, why the month of September and how did this come about? Okay. <laughs> so I think September is important because we feel like it's when kids are excited to get back in school. And especially for your senior year, you feel like a lot of pressure is going on. So for us, picking September, it's just a perfect catalyst to start things, to get, get everything started. Because um, a lot of kids are applying to colleges. Mm -hmm. And also, I feel like we're almost lifting a burden in some way where kids are coming to our college fair and getting accepted and they can go their senior year already knowing, okay, I've already been admitted to college as long as I maintain my grades. Wonderful. Yeah. And how are you bringing the HBCU experience to Wilmington Delaware? What does this look like? I know we have a lot of events coming up. Right. I don't oh, want to. Yeah. I, I want the audience to hear from you. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Because so you guys really pick this out. You're really selective, yeah. and you want them to really gain this experience. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So starting uh, Sunday, September the 16th, we're going to have an HBCU themed church service at um, Bethel Amy Church on Walnut Street. Uh, service starts at 10:30 a.m. We're encouraging people to come out in their HBCU nailia. If you are a member of a Black Greek letter organization, you can wear that as well. But we just want to highlight the kickoff of the week at a black church in the city of Wilmington. So that's why we chose Bethel AME. And the pastor, Reverend Beeman, is a graduate of Wilberforce, which is an HBCU. Okay. So it's a perfect Wonderful. opportunity to kick it off there. Um, following that, on Tuesday, the 18th, we're going to have a community day on the east side of Wilmington. Um, the exact location we will follow up with, but it's going to be close to Howard High School. We're going to clean up a few blocks with some community residents an HBCU alum, just to highlight the one of the core principles of HBCUs and their founding um, is on community uh, engagement and giving back and sure. cleaning up and reaching back and pulling forward. So we wanted to highlight an event that week doing just that with HBCU alum. Wonderful. Now following that on Wednesday at Bull Bay, we'll have a HBCU happy hour. Um, so we chose the black owned business in the city of Wilmington. So Wonderful. Bull Bay Caribbean Cuisine. It'll be from 5.30 to 8. They have a ton of specials going on there. So yeah. we're going to get our social media out very soon so that everyone has dates, times, locations for everything. Um, but that happy hour will be about two and a half hours long. You'll be able to engage with alum uh, that have come from HBCUs in Wilmington and beyond. Okay. And then after that, Thursday the 19th, we're going to have a panel discussion at the Delaware Contemporary. Okay. It's going to be my HBCU experience. Um, do you want to highlight who we have confirmed so far? Yeah, so um, just to, I guess, make the announcement, we have confirmed uh, Robert Covington of the Philadelphia 76ers, nice. um, who was all defensive player of the year, or all, I mean, all defensive team um, this year. And he's a proud graduate 
of Tennessee State University. Um, and so I think the purpose of this, again, what we're really focusing on is highlighting HBCU graduates that have gone on to do amazing things. And a lot of times we may not know it or we may not recognize it. And so he's going to kind of come and be a part of our panel to discuss how going on HBCU has helped him, you know, achieve his uh, goal of being an NBA player. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And where can people find more information? Is it WilmingtonD.gov? Yes, it's, it's going to be on the website as well. And I know uh, the event calendar as well. Um, if you go to the city's event calendar, you'll be able to click on that tab and it'll lead you to all the details. And we have a couple other more, um, some heavy hitters coming to our panel discussion as well, but we'll save that secret. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, there's so much that's going to be happening. Yeah, it's like is. you have to be there. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You and, do. And, and share, and before we leave, share that with us. Like, yeah. why should people come out? Okay, so before we go, I just want to go with the last two dates. So on yeah. Friday oh, yes. is our college fair, which mm -hmm. is, I think, the most important day um, because that's when kids have an opportunity to come and meet these different colleges and get admitted on the spot and receive scholarship. We had a kid last year by the name of Joseph Lindsay who's at Lincoln University right now. He got a full ride in 20 minutes. Wow. Um, so it, it can happen. Um, and as I said, it can set your senior uh, year off the, uh, the right way. Also on that Saturday at Frawley Stadium, doors open up at 2 o'clock. The event starts at 3 o'clock. We're hosting a battle of the bands. Um, so we're super, super excited about that. Um, first ever HBCU battle of the bands right here in Wilmington at Frawley Stadium. Um, the bands that we have confirmed are Delaware State University, Bowie State, Lincoln and Hampton. So again, we have four bands and they will be competing and we are gonna have some high school bands coming out as well. So that's the definitely the week long. And I think that it's so important for everyone to come out and support this event because one, it just encompasses the HBCU experience from church to community to social hour to top people that have gone on and been successful, kind of that legacy that we talked about, giving opportunity to kids, scholarships and colleges and the music and, and, and having a good time. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Well, this yeah. is definitely an event not to miss. And I really hope a lot of people come out. And, and before you're doing we, a wonderful job. Before we <laughs> go, I just you. wanted to give you a pin that we have commemorating oh, the week you. as a fellow nice. HBCU alum. So. Oh, yeah. Yes, I'm going to be there with my Morgan State University gear. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Absolutely. Thank you so much no, for your time you. today. Thank you. I'm Yasini Tavares. Thank you so much for watching.